Hi, welcome to another episode of Net Earth. Instead of diving deep into one climate change related definition, today I want to give you a bird's eye view of well how everything's playing out. So we don't get stuck on the theory too much. Let's talk about it. I comb through the news reports, the med department predictions and warnings, tweets of the biggest climate change related headlines across the world. Each headline is concerning, but their true gravity is revealed when seen together. The big headline, it's getting hot. June began on a hot note even where it wasn't supposed to. In New Zealand, that's the time when winter usually sets in. It averages about 16 degrees Celsius. It was 22 to 23 degrees Celsius in some places in June this year. Over in the Mediterranean, temperatures that don't usually cross 25 to 30 degrees crossed 40 degrees in Turkey and 35 in Tunisia, Sicily and Malta. And we're only on June 1. I'm just kidding, I'm not going day by day. Last week, the UK declared its first ever heat wave warning. Temperatures crossed 40 degrees for the first time ever. At one point last week, BBC's daily weather map of the UK looked a lot like BBC's worst case projections of a hot July in 2050 if we keep going the way we are going. The UK government went so far as to issue a warning that the heat may cause death this time around. Places in Portugal and Spain are crossing 45 to 46 degrees Celsius temperatures even India panics about. Many of these countries also saw massive wildfires destroy acre after acre and only add to the heat. Between July 7th and July 13th, over 1,020 people died in Portugal and Spain due to the heat. The heat is unbearable even in France. In fact, almost all of Europe, especially the Mediterranean countries, are going through a profound historic heat wave. For more on extreme climate patterns in Europe and their impact on cities, vulnerable populations and events, see this tweet thread from Carl M, Senior Climate Correspondent at Politico Europe. I'll leave a link in the description for you. The role of climate change in all of this is well unequivocal, as scientists say. I want to brush up on what we have spoken about here in the first episode, related to heat waves, global warming and climate change. Those last two words are used interchangeably, but they are not the same. Global warming refers to a rise in average temperatures across the world. It doesn't mean that everywhere gets hotter by the same amount. It doesn't mean that it happens at the same time. It also doesn't mean that some places aren't getting cooler for now. It just means that on average, places across the world are getting hotter. Global warming can happen due to multiple reasons. Our challenge is the kind that is caused by us burning way too many fossil fuels and releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that trap the heat. Climate change is caused due to global warming among other reasons. Once heat is trapped in the Earth's atmosphere, it bounces back and interacts with Earth's climate systems, land, oceans, ice sheets, etc. This triggers a series of changes that we collectively call climate change. Scientists are measuring up to 54 parameters of climate change, including parameters that cause extreme weather events like heat waves. In Asia, China has been burning all-time heat records for weeks, dozens of provinces recording temperatures above 40 degrees. It's also extremely humid in China. When high temperatures meet high humidity, scientists call it wet bulb temperatures. These can potentially be deadly because the human body dehydrates that much faster. Something Indians are all too familiar with, especially those in North India who sheltered under temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius but which actually felt like 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Large parts of China have also been ravaged by floods. Experts say such extreme weather events are becoming more likely due to climate change. Warmer air can hold more water, making cloudbursts that much more severe when they are released. And then this happened. I 
I don't think I need to tell you that's not normal. Even East Russia, its little faraway islands that remain cold throughout the year are recording temperatures over 30 and 20 degrees Celsius. Canada, parts of the US, Puerto Rico, Thailand, Iran, Japan. The list of countries where this June was among the three hottest Junes ever recorded is quite long. So net net uncomfortably hot for millions across the world these past few weeks. In places where it was supposed to be cold, it was colder than usual. Parts of Australia have been breaking records from the 1960s and reporting frosty, chilly winds. Parts of Southern Africa were cooler than average even as a never-ending heat wave stretched on in East Africa. But the larger trend to note is that it's getting hotter. June was one of the hottest months ever recorded across continents. On July 3rd, snow started melting on Mount Sonblik in Austria. Seasonal snow has never melted earlier than 13th August. This time it was all melted in days. Ironically, this is also where the mountain observatory with the longest and most reliable climate data is located. In some more irony, a quick story about Oymikon in Russia. It is famous for having the record of the lowest temperature in an occupied village at minus 67.7 Celsius on 6th February 1933. 89 years later, in the last week of this June, another record was set. It recorded its warmest ever day with maximum temperatures of over 31 degrees Celsius. Things are not great, shall we say? The idea of net earth is not to get stuck on the individual doomsday of each headline, but to start meaningful conversations about the one thing that definitely impacts us all and our role in it. And with this informed opinion by our side, we look at politics and policy with a clear lens. On one side, India banned single-use plastics from July 1st. But on the other hand, the US Supreme Court passed a landmark ruling that limits the powers of the Environmental Protection Agency to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. This means that the US government can no longer use its existing powers to phase out coal-fired power generation without clear congressional authorization. In the UK, the fledgling government found the time to do its first ever and then a second COBRA meeting on something climate related, but it took a record breaking, potentially deadly heat wave to do that. On July 10th, after 18 days of blockades and protests, the government of Ecuador and the indigenous peoples reached an agreement to stop plans to increase oil, gas and mining expansion in the Amazon. In India, it has been months the Adivasis of Hastio Arand have been protesting against coal mining in the forests they call home. There has been no movement there. Last month, China banned new steel, cooking, oil refining, cement and glass projects in key zones to combat climate change by lowering pollution and carbon emissions. This month, China is very likely to resume coal imports from Australia after a two-year political dispute, which is to say that the world's biggest coal burner and its second biggest exporter are getting back to business. Meanwhile, the Pacific Islands recently made it clear to the superpowers quoting them for their rich marine resources that climate financing and action has to be a central part of all deals. I list these examples from across the world because it's all happening on this pale blue hot rock that we inhabit. We have skin in the game in each of these policy decisions, no matter how remote the news may seem. Hope, as always, can be found among people like you and artists like Thukral and Tagra. Jitain Thukral and Sumir Tagra have been collaborating for close to two decades now, experimenting with a variety of media. When we started this series, they sent us some of their latest work. A board game from the AND Archives project they exhibited at the India Art Fair this year. It explores ways to disrupt existing mindsets and prompt players to reflect on pressing challenges, including climate change. We had the pleasure of engaging with the board game they sent us. I want to spend a few seconds telling you about it. The game 2030 Net Zero 2022 is incredibly well thought out. What you need to play the game are glasses of water from the kitchen, 
The box comes with a rock which you move around the board game itself which is printed on a jute cloth. The game allows people to monitor and analyze the harmful gases we release into the atmosphere each year. Each player is tasked with bringing down their net emissions down to zero and can save resources and balance the temperature of the earth through beautifully designed cards. I have played it with my friends and I highly recommend reading more about the game and Tukral and Tagra. Solving for the biggest crisis of the generation is going to be an uphill battle while it's also really hot. We need more artists like them to join and infuse their creative energies into this fight and we are stoked when they do that. I'll stop here for today. Next week we'll talk about tipping points which happens when climate change triggers well more climate change. We'll figure it out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment with your questions, feedback, climate anxieties or a climate headline that you think should be amplified. I'll see you next Friday.